Chapter 2 Season 7 starts tomorrow, so I think now is the best time to look back and do a season ranking video. This was a pretty requested video, and now is probably the best time to make it. Oh man, why did I just repeat myself then? Anyways, so while we wait to get abducted by aliens, let's take a look back at all the previous seasons. The ranking video will be in the same format as my other tier list videos, with S being the best and F being the worst. All my ratings are ultimately based on my personal opinions, so it will be different from my more objective analysis of seasons in the past. But I will be looking at the season's meta, battle pass, any live events, and just the overall perception of it. With that being said, let's get right to the rankings. This was really less of a season, and more of a testing phase for the game. There was really nothing of note, there were no skins except for the old defaults, and the only game modes were solos and squads. There were some pretty classic locations on the map, but they weren't even named yet. The meta was really only some basic guns, and since the game was brand new, the gameplay consisted of a lot of sneaking around and spraying each other. Overall, looking back, the game was very different and much simpler, as well as more boring. Preseason gets a C rating. By modern standards, this would be bare bones, but we can appreciate how it was the beginning of the game that was to come. All in all, I would say that Season 1 is pretty similar to the preseason. The only difference was that the game was now officially released. There were really only two notable parts of this season. The first one was that the locations on the map actually got names, and these would be the first official POIs. Season 1 also introduced the hints of a battle pass. However, this was called the Season Shop instead. While you were able to gain tiers, instead of actually getting the items for reaching a certain tier, once you reached that tier, you gained the ability to buy the item from the Season Shop. The perks of the Season Shop was that you could only buy the certain item that season. The most well known of these items are the Renegade Raider and Aerial Assault Trooper, which is the reason why these skins are so coveted nowadays. But it does suck that you actually have to buy the items that you've earned. Overall, I'm going to give Season 1 a C for the same reasons I did the preseason. Season 2 was when the game started to get interesting. Tilted Towers was added to the game, which was the biggest POI at the time, and considering how Tilted went on to become an iconic location, this was a huge change and one that made the game better in my opinion. Tilted was controversial because people thought that too many people landed there and made the gameplay unbalanced due to the fact that half the lobby would die in Tilted in a matter of minutes. However, Tilted Towers was a special location, and even though we have POIs as big as Tilted in the modern game, Tilted still felt way bigger back then. I think that a decade and further in the future, Tilted Towers will go down as one of the most iconic locations in gaming history. Season 2 was also the first season with a proper battle pass. It was still not a full battle pass with only 70 tiers and 4 skins, two of which were basically identical. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than Season 1. Season 2 also marks the beginning of more wacky concepts and ideas being added to the game. The best example is the Boogie Bomb, which is basically a grenade that forces you to dance for a couple of seconds, making it so you can't shoot back or build. This was a good trend for the game to go into, because before the gameplay and weapons were really just grounded guns. By going into more goofy items, Fortnite was able to forge an identity for itself and distinguish itself from the other shooter battle royale games popular at the time. These items would also allow for more unique and fun gameplay, especially in the earlier days when sweaty playstyles were not the norm. Season 2 was also the first season where Fortnite became somewhat popular. It's kind of when people started to play for fun after school, and around when streamers who played the game became extremely popular. Season 2 was the beginning of the extreme initial popularity of the game. And nowadays, a sizable amount of people look back on it as their introduction to Fortnite. Season 2 gets a B in my opinion, because while it was a great season for its time, once again the weakness with these earlier seasons is that they were a lot more bare bones than later seasons. Chapter 1 Season 3, in my opinion, is one of the best seasons we've ever got in the game. I might be biased because it was my first season playing Fortnite, but man, just the vibe and the culture of the game back then was great. Everybody was playing it and everybody was talking about it. Going home and playing the game after high school with friends, it was just an amazing time. Even if we sucked at the game, it was still fun. Just how big the game was and how it permeated culture back then, with everybody playing it and the popular streamers playing it, it just made this season extremely fun. Season 3 also had the first popular battle pass with 100 tiers, 
The Battle Pass this season has some of the most iconic skins of all time in Fortnite, with classics such as Rustlord, Elite Agent, and the infamous Reaper, more popularly known as the bootleg John Wick. Season 3 also held the beginning of what would become the storyline. Around halfway through the season, we saw the meteor in the sky, and people were eagerly anticipating what that would lead to. These weeks of waiting as the meteor drew closer were, not gonna lie, probably the most hyped the Fortnite community has ever been. It may just be because there were so many people waiting, but overall, this was probably one of the best times to be a Fortnite player. Season 3 gets an S tier, even if it is partly due to nostalgia. Chapter 1 Season 4 was also the first for a lot. It was the first time we got a POI in the game that wasn't just a basic neighborhood, city, or farm. We got Dusty Divot, which was the crater left behind by the meteor crash. The POI also had Hop Rocks, which were surprisingly the first consumables in the game, and it also improved mobility. Season 4 also added the first ever vehicle to Fortnite, the shopping cart. These were so fun to use back then, and it's fitting that Fortnite's first ever vehicle was something as wacky and outlandish as a shopping cart. Season 4's Battle Pass is also the one that introduced edit styles, but other than the Tier 100 Omega and maybe the Tier 1 Carbide, the Battle Pass is nothing to write home about. However, this Battle Pass was also the first one to have a secret skin, which became a staple of Fortnite Battle Passes in the future. The first secret skin is The Visitor, and is honestly one of the best secret skins even up to today. The Visitor was also the first skin to be related to the storyline, and he was basically the one who started it. He escaped from the Meteor Crater and started to build a rocket. I'm not going to explain all the story stuff here because it isn't really relevant to the video, but I do have another video explaining everything. Speaking of storylines, Season 4 also had the first ever live event. It was the rocket launch, and there was a twist as it created a rift in the sky instead of just blowing up a location like many expected. The fact that this was a live cinematic event that happened in a proper game was pretty groundbreaking back then, not just for Fortnite, but basically all of the gaming world. I really just see Season 4 as a continuation of Season 3. The nostalgia is still real, and if anything, Season 4 just improved on Season 3, and added a bunch of things which would become Fortnite staples in the future. Season 4 gets an easy S tier for me. Season 5 of Fortnite is a mixed bag in my opinion. On one hand, you have some pretty cool stuff. For example, the change at the beginning of the season was the biggest we've had up to that point, with a whole desert biome being added. This was also the first season with proper rifts, which would become a staple of Fortnite in the future. The game also added the golf carts, which you can say were the first real vehicles in the game, and they were also a really fun addition. Season 5 also had the best battle pass up to that point. There were some skins that were average, but none that were outright bad. We also got Drift as a skin, which is definitely a top 10 most iconic Fortnite skin. There were also some cool LTMs this season, especially the Getaway Heist, that was definitely an amazing game mode. However, Season 5 had some major issues in gameplay balance. Shotguns were terrible at the time after they got nerfed into the ground. This, combined with their inconsistency, basically made them useless. The SMGs were buffed heavily, with the newly added P90 being absolutely disgusting in how overpowered it was. This change simply just made playing the game not fun, because the buffed SMGs just meant that anybody could come along and destroy you in 2 seconds. Say what you want about pump shotguns being overpowered, but at least they were only overpowered if you had the skill to use them properly. The same could not be said for the SMGs. Overall, Season 5 would have been a great season if only it had a good gameplay meta. All they needed to do was remove Double Pump because that was overpowered, but then they needed to just tweak shotguns to be more consistent and the meta would have been perfect. Season 5 gets a B from me because it could have been good and it was in certain aspects, but the game simply being unfun during the time brings it down a notch. But it was about to get worse. Chapter 1 Season 6 was legitimately an awful season all around. Possibly the one redeeming factor was that the pump shotguns were buffed back to their deserved glory. But other than that, basically everything else sucked. Season 6's battle pass was Halloween themed. Now think about Halloween. Think about all the cool and unique monsters and skins we could have gotten. And then take a look at what we actually got. We have a man wearing an inflatable costume. We have a female tomato in a black dress. What is this? The only two decent skins were the Calamity and Dire. 
but as a tier 1 or tier 100 skins, they had to be good or else I would be at a loss for words. The worst offender of the season had to be the Fortnite Nightmares event. These 12 days were probably some of the worst days Fortnite has ever seen. First of all, you had the zombies. These guys were annoying as hell. Nobody wanted them in the main game. Why not just give them their own limited time mode? Nobody would complain about that. Instead, you've got people trying to play Battle Royale and they get randomly hoarded by a bunch of zombies. They weren't even fun to fight against, just extremely annoying. No wonder people call Fort Nightmares 2018 one of the worst periods in Fortnite history. Moving on to other aspects of the season, the live event was decent, but nothing too special. Overall, it really didn't have an effect on the game other than ending Fort Nightmares, so I guess we can thank it for that. And also, the Skull Trooper returning caused one of the dumbest controversies in the game's history. Season 6 was not bad, none of the seasons are, but it was just below average compared to all the other seasons, which is why I get to D rating. Season 7 was a step up from Season 6, but it was still kind of lackluster. Season 7 had a Christmas theme, and I will say that the atmosphere of the season does fulfill that role. The season's vibe felt very festive and cozy. However, I will say that the Season 7 Battle Pass is probably one of the weaker ones. It hurts me to say this because it was the first Battle Pass I've ever bought, but it's true. Basically all the skins in it are very forgettable. Even the best ones, Lynx and Ice King, were popular at the time being, but nowadays, compared to the other Battle Pass skins, they are very weak. One positive I will give it is that this was the first season with overtime challenges, and the first season where every skin in the Battle Pass had an edit style. The meta was also kind of weird during the season. The guns were fine, but there were some questionable choices with the special items. You had the planes added to the game, which I think were not too bad. They're really easy to shoot down from the ground, and the cannons only face forward, making them easy to dodge. However, I can see why people think that they're annoying, especially since they were used a lot to stall to the endgame. We also got zip lines, which right now they're fine, but back then they were extremely buggy. This season also introduced the first permanent mythic item in the base game. Well, at least Epic wanted it to be permanent before they received massive backlash for it. This was the Infinity Blade. My god, what were they thinking with this? Wielding the blade gave the user 200 health and shield as well as constant regeneration and huge damage and mobility capabilities. This was only in the game for a couple days, but that was enough for the entire community to rally behind a single opinion for once. Down with the Infinity Blade. What can I say about the season? We got a new biome, the Iceberg Biome, but unlike the Desert Biome we got in Season 5, the Iceberg was very lackluster. Frosty Flights, Polar Peak, and Happy Hamlet were pretty forgettable locations that nobody really liked, and they replaced iconic locations like Greasy Grove, Flush Factory, and Risky Reels. At least we got the block. That recognized users who liked to build in the creative mode by allowing selected ones to have the creations on the actual map. That's kind of cool and it's a way for Epic to show the creative community that they appreciate what they're doing too. The live events this season were lackluster as well. Marshmallow had an in-game concert, and it was fine, I guess. I don't hate the actual story event as much as the majority does, but I will admit all that build up for the Ice King just to cover the map in snow was kind of a letdown. At least it looked cool. But of course, we got fog covering the map and ice zombies. At least this time around, Epic listened to how the community despised zombies and decreased their spawn rates. Overall, I would give Season 7 a C. I think that it was just better than Season 6 because it was just more interesting to play than Season 6 with more unique good stuff and less annoying bad stuff. And they tried out different things, but were quick to listen and act when they got negative responses. You've gotta give them credit for that. I will say Chapter 1 Season 8 was a very controversial season for the competitive community. Unfortunately for them, I am not a competitive player and I love this season. I feel like this season is very underrated in all aspects because it was just so perfect. People don't remember it when looking back because there was nothing that was standout bad. Let's start off by taking a look at the battle pass. I would say this is in one of the top 5 battle passes ever, even top 3 in my opinion. Every skin is amazing, both tier 1s are great, and even the normally forgettable ones in the middle are amazing, with the overtime challenges this season giving them really cool extra styles. I know how there was a controversy about how Lux was too bland to be a tier 100, but I'm fine with it because she's a clean skin anyway and you're getting it for 950 V-Bucks, so who are we to complain? 
I mean, if Lux was switched to tier 1 and Blackheart was switched to tier 100, nobody would be complaining. The worst skin in the whole pass was Peely, and you can't even be mad about that because Peely as a meme skin became so iconic. Not to mention that this battle pass was also free if you did the overtime challenges in Season 7. Yeah, this amazing battle pass was free. The new biome was great. The jungle and volcano were a really cool addition. I will say that the new points of interest were not necessarily the best, but at least the biome had lots of variety within it, unlike the iceberg which was just, well, ice. The mobility and gun meta were also amazing. The ballers were probably the best vehicle in Fortnite history, especially after they got nerfed a little making them a little more fair. This, combined with the other mobility items like cans and geysers, made a very balanced mobility meta. The gunplay was also pretty nice. Season 8 saw the introduction of the fan favorite flint knock pistol, which is just so fun to play with. You also had the boom bow, which was definitely overpowered but not to the extent of the infinity sword. The live event at the end was also really nice. The fact that Epic allowed users to choose what item should be invaulted through the form of an event was cool, even though the users chose something that wasn't necessarily the best. The volcano half of the event was cool, and the fact that the eruption destroyed Tilted and Retail was a welcome surprise. If you couldn't tell already, I'm giving Season 8 an S tier. It was near perfection in basically all aspects, and is woefully underrated. Season 8 was Epic's response to a community who was getting tired of the game after two lackluster seasons, and it showed that they could make good content if they tried. Chapter 1 Season 9 was a step down from Season 8, but at least it was still fun. Season 9 had a futuristic theme, which is pretty cool. The map changes reflected this, with Tilted and Retail being rebuilt as cities of the future. The battle pass, however, left a lot to be desired, with the only good skins being Demi and Vendetta, the tier 87 and 100 skins respectively. This season introduced Fort Bites, which were challenges you could complete to unlock styles and items for the battle pass skins, as well as the secret skin Singularity. These Fort Bite challenges were notoriously hard to complete, and I believe that you shouldn't have to complete entire sets of challenges other than the weekly ones to get battle pass items. The gun meta was also kind of weird this season because of the removal of the pump shotgun. Yeah, this is the first time the pump was not in the game. It was replaced with the combat shotgun. Now, I've been back and forth on this, but I will say I do enjoy the pump more than the combat. The pump just feels better to use. It was nice that Epic tried to change things up, but they honestly should have just kept the pump in game as well as added the combat. The live event this season was sick. It was literally a giant mecha versus a monster. What more could you ask for? And it led directly into the next season. Overall, I'd give season 9 a B. It's a decent season, just pretty forgettable when you compare it to other good seasons. Now, we get to possibly the most controversial season of Fortnite ever. Season X and I love it. First off, let's talk about the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass is definitely in the top 3, and depending on who you ask, this just might be the best Battle Pass ever. It may be all remakes, but this Battle Pass just took the most popular skins of the past 9 seasons and just made them better in every single way possible. I also really like the chaos of the season as well. I understand why people disliked mechs, but they were not only fun to use but also kind of fun to fight against. Yeah, they were overpowered, especially their missiles, but they were also easy to combat, they just required a different play strategy to do so. The various items added into the game were really fun to mess around with. I can understand why the cluttered loot pool may have been annoying, but as someone who mainly played Team Rumble back then, having such diverse options made the game fun and chaotic. We also had constant map changes in the form of Rift Zones, Now I will say that this is a pretty big negative. I would say the best one we had was Tilted Town because it required you to play differently than you normally would. But the rest of them were just either annoying or boring. You had Retail Row, which returned with zombies because if we learned anything over the course of this video, it's that the Fortnite community just loves zombies, right? You also had Greasy Grove return, except that now it was a taco joint and you'd be forced to dance every two minutes because of quote unquote taco time. And then you had the worst rift zone, Moisty Palms, where you would turn into a random item every time you crouched. Talk about the worst gimmicks possible. Also, we can't talk about Season X without talking about the end event. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna say that this is probably the best event in Fortnite history. 
The build up to the event with the rocket being built and the visitor tapes being found around the map was great, and the event itself was just amazingly done. And of course, the black hole at the end was probably one of the most iconic moments in Fortnite history. Season X could have been one of the best seasons ever if it weren't for the Rift Zone gimmicks being legitimately terrible. If the Rift Zones were better, I would give Season X an S tier, but because of these negatives, I'm going to have to sadly give it an A. This wraps up Chapter 1, and now we move on to Chapter 2. Chapter 2 Season 1 was a whole new beginning for the game. After the absolute chaos of Season X, Chapter 2 Season 1 was a return to the grounded gunplay of early Fortnite. The crazy items that we had were just replaced by basic guns, and the crazy vehicles like the mechs were replaced by simple motorboats. The biggest change, of course, was the brand new map. This map had locations similar to the beginning seasons of Chapter 1, mostly just basic locations you could probably find something similar to in real life. However, for a time, it was still fun to play through, as they were brand new locations. One of my favorite changes of Chapter 2 Season 1 was how the features on the map became more immersive and interactive, as opposed to just being a setting. You were actually able to swim in the water, gas station pumps were able to blow up if you shoot them, and you can hide in dumpsters, hay bales, and porta potties. The battle pass was nothing to write home about, however. The only two skins that are good are 8 Ball vs Scratch and the Tier 100's Confusion. Other than that, they are all pretty forgettable. A huge negative of Chapter 2 Season 1, however, is just how long it was. It was over 120 days long, over a third of the whole year. And considering that later in the season we didn't get a lot of new content, it meant that we had to spend a long time just playing that simple meta, and it got very boring. It was an insanely long wait for Chapter 2 Season 2. For those reasons, I'm going to give Chapter 2 Season 1 a B tier. The initial changes from Chapter 1, especially the huge map change, made it exciting to begin with, but the content soon got stale because of just how long the season was. Chapter 2 Season 2 was a step up from Chapter 2 Season 1 in many ways. There were many new locations added, and each of them were all very unique and had their own character. This season had a spy theme, and Epic really went all in with this theme. The Battle Pass skins all had their own character, and even to this day, they still have a following because of how the season used challenges and short cutscenes to give them actual personalities. Skins like Meowsles, Sky, and Midas are all still very popular now. This season also introduced a staple of modern Fortnite, the first official NPCs. Across the map, there would be specific POIs where you could find henchmen and their bosses. They were all hostile, and they would sometimes drop exclusive weapons. These NPCs were jarring to see at the beginning of the season, but ultimately, they were a pretty good addition and added some freshness to the typically PvP gameplay, even if some people thought they were a bit overpowered. I, however, didn't really have any problem with them. Overall, the reason why Chapter 2 Season 2 is so beloved within the community is ultimately the theme of the season. All seasons have themes, but for a lot of them it's just a loose category which isn't even completely followed. However, the spy theme of Chapter 2 Season 2 was oozing through every update, skin, and item released that season. They really went all in with the spy stuff, and it paid off. I don't think we've ever had a season with such a cohesive theme before, and ever since. And this made Chapter 2 Season 2 special in the eyes of many Fortnite players. We should also talk about how Chapter 2 Season 2 was really the season where a lot of people got invested into the story. Before, the Fortnite story was something fans didn't really pay attention to, and those who did were really just grasping at straws. However, this season, a lot more people started to speculate about the story. It might just be because people were more invested in the skins as characters rather than just cosmetics. As the season drew to a close, a lot of people were invested in Midas and what he was going to do with the device. And the live event itself was pretty good. For the first event of Chapter 2, the device event was much anticipated, and it definitely paid off. The standout part were definitely the scenes where we were transported to Io's office, and for the first time, we were in first person and heard voice acted dialogue. It was this moment where people realized that Fortnite actually did have a proper story they were building up. Overall, I think people will look back at Chapter 2 Season 2 as one of the most iconic seasons of Fortnite ever, and a turning point for the game overall. It gets an S tier from me.
Chapter 2 Season 3 of Fortnite was a step down in every way from Chapter 2 Season 2. We went from one of the most memorable seasons to possibly one of the most forgettable ones. The theme for this season was water, and it showed this by initially having the map completely flooded over, with only some pieces of land remaining. Honestly, this part of the season was interesting, but Fortnite kind of pushed themselves into a corner with this. While it was interesting for a time, there was no way people would enjoy having a flooded map for an entire season, as it would get old quick. So Epic decided to have the water levels lower every week, which mitigated that issue. However, it created another problem. There was nothing interesting about the season after the water levels went down, and there was barely any story or anything happening. In fact, it seemed like the whole thing was just an ad for season 4, which, oh boy, we will get to. The best things added this season were the cars, which were and still are really fun. However, they were added in so late into the season that we really didn't get to enjoy it that much in Season 3. The Battle Pass was fine. The standout skins were Jewels and the Enlightened Eternal Knight, and maybe Fade. Everything else was just forgettable. You got Aquaman as our secret skin this time around. This was the second collab in a row, with Deadpool being the secret skin of Chapter 2 Season 2. The difference was that the Deadpool collab was actually done well, he was a more popular character, and people were willing to look over the fact that a collaboration was in the battle pass. However, Aquaman was just a less liked character, and when people learned that he would be the secret skin for Chapter 2 Season 3, they got mad because we didn't want to have collabs take up the secret skin slot going forward into the game. The Aquaman collab also just had less effort put into it than the Deadpool one. And in terms of the NPCs added last season, this season just made them kind of bad. The henchmen still stayed kind of the same, but we got the Marauders, which are probably one of the worst additions ever added to Fortnite. They were either like really easy to kill, or they would just wipe you and come in at the worst time, like when you're healing your teammate, and then they just like, you just hear their noises and you're like, oh my god. Uh, they're one of the worst additions added to Fortnite, and they severely lowered the quality and even just the fun of the season for me. Overall, Chapter 2 Season 3 will get a C. It was very forgettable, but there were definitely some highlights to it. But if you thought the collab in this season was bad, just wait until we get to the next one. Let's move on. So, Chapter 2 Season 4 may be one of the most divisive seasons ever. You either love it or you hate it. And I am one of the ones who hated it. I already don't like collabs in the Battle Pass, and the fact that this whole season was a collaboration was just terrible for me. Every single skin was a Marvel skin. Even most of the new item shop skins this season were Marvel. The mythic weapons this season were all based off of Marvel superpowers, and they were just bad to play with and bad to play against. The live event at the end of this season was hyped up as one of the greatest live events the game will ever see, but to be honest, it's one of the worst. The beginning was fine, with Galactus coming up and towering over the island, but after that it just quickly devolves into a crappy, repetitive arcade shooter game. I'm sorry if I sound negative and biased, it's just that everything about this season fell flat for me. However, I still played it and still have some fun. So it doesn't get an F. It however does get a D. Let's quickly move on to the next season. I don't want to talk about this one anymore. <laughs> Thank god we have an actual good season now. Chapter 2 Season 5 was just as much of a collab fest as the previous season, but this time around the collabs were a lot more unique and surprisingly retro than just a bunch of Marvel skins. Chapter 2 Season 5 had a bounty hunter theme, and they honestly did a lot with it. The Battle Pass is probably one of the best in my opinion. The weakest skins were definitely the Mandalorian and the Predator, but compared to previous collaboration skins, they're a lot better than just a superhero and they actually fit the Bounty Hunter theme of the season. However, they pale when compared to the rest of the Battle Pass. What a diverse and unique set of skins, each very different but still honest to the Bounty Hunter theme. The new desert biome we got in the middle was pretty cool and the sand tunneling and the zero point rocks were a welcome addition to the game because they really helped the mobility. Also, the return of the zero point was also nice. This season also introduced proper NPCs instead of just hostile AI. The NPCs were based off of existing skins, with the more important ones being skins from the battle pass. They gave you quests, bounties, and sold weapons, all using the new currency of gold. They also had unique lines of dialogue. 
this is honestly a great addition to the game. It gives currently existing skins a lot more character, as well as the ability to talk about story and lore in the game itself. I also really liked the new POIs in the meta of the season. It was just really fun to play in. The Dragon's Breath shotgun was a nice addition, as well as the Mando Sniper. This in addition to all the new cool exotic weapons, which could be purchased for gold, and they were weapons with neat side abilities like knockback and tracking. Overall, Chapter 2 Season 5 was not a perfect season, as it started to get boring near the end. However, it was still a great one, which is why it gets an A tier from me. So here we are. At the time of me writing this video, we are currently at the end of Chapter 2 Season 6. And this was a bold season. Bold in a good or bad way though? Let's see. This season started off with a bang, as instead of a live event, we instead got an event everyone could play as soon as they booted up the game. This is such a better format than the previous events, where we would have to queue up an hour early in the tiny hope that we make it into the event servers. This format also allowed for a much more in-depth live event, where we got voiced cutscenes and a, just a grander scale of events. The meta also underwent a huge change, as this season had the greatest loophole change of any update ever. Most weapons were replaced with makeshift weapons, which were low power, low accuracy guns. Using the new crafting system, we can upgrade makeshift weapons into either primal or mechanical weapons, based on whether we use bones or mechanical parts on our makeshift weapons. The crafting system is definitely a cool addition to the game, but I think makeshift weapons were a bit too underpowered, especially when you start off with them. A better solution would be to have the classic guns as the normal dropped weapons, and we can use the parts to craft them into better weapons. The crafting system would work better if we could use it to give already good guns special effects, like more damage or greater accuracy, or some elemental effects. I mean, take a look at the bows this season and the variety of them. That's what I want crafting to be. The modding theme continues with the cars and the chonker tires. This car mod makes cars so much fun, and I would love for it to be expanded upon with other vehicles and other modifications. However, I think the rest of the season is kind of forgettable. The other big thing added was wildlife in the forms of wolves, chickens, boars, and velociraptors, which definitely fit the primal theme. As a healing source and a source for bones, they are cool. The taming aspect is lackluster. Even if you successfully tame one, they don't really help much in my experience. The battle pass is also pretty forgettable. Agent Jones is cool as a character, but as a skin, he is definitely a weaker one. The rest of the battle pass is just random skins. It seems like Epic didn't know what to do with this battle pass, except maybe for Jones, Raz, and the Spire Assassin. So they just picked random collaborations and filler skins to fill the rest of the battle pass. And even the three decent skins we have aren't that good. Overall, Chapter 2 Season 6 tried a lot of new stuff. It won some and it lost some, but overall it was a good season. I'll give it a B ranking. And that is officially every season up till now. Chapter 2 Season 7 is looking like it's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to see what it does with the game. Fortnite has evolved so far since all the way back in 2017, and I hope that it becomes better in the future. If you liked the video and want to support me more, please use code RIVECHA when buying stuff in Fortnite, especially the brand new Battle Pass coming out tomorrow. But you can also support me by liking, commenting, and of course, subscribing. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.